new year new how-to bug bounty video but this one is different let me share something that just happened to me recently i was on a six hour layover wanting to explore but worried about my budget in those six hours at the airport i found enough bugs to fund the entire side trip that is the power of bug bounty hunting when you know what you're doing i've spent months analyzing what's working for the entire bug bounty community not just my own methods i've listened to countless interviews watched every conference talk and had private conversations with some of the top bug bounty hunters were constantly landing four to five digit bounties. Just like many of you, I started with chasing basic access vulnerabilities for maybe two to $300 payouts. But everything changed when I shift from finding random vulnerabilities to hacking with a purpose. Within months, I landed my first major payout that was $9,000 for SQL injections on Yahoo. 10 years later, I've earned over a million in bug bounties. But this video isn't just about my success. I've taken all this research and experience from both wins and failures and distilled it into a framework that is going to work right now in 2025. Before we dive in, I want to hear your biggest challenge with bug bounty hunting right now. Drop a comment below telling me what is holding you back, whether it's choosing a target, finding bugs, or getting paid what you are worth. I'll be reading through all the comments and try to help guide future videos. Speaking of getting paid, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Integrity. I hack on Integrity, and honestly, it's one of the best platforms I've worked on. They connect hackers like me with companies like Intel, Ubisoft, and Red Bull to help them find and fix vulnerabilities before they become a real problem. What I really like about Integrity is how they treat researchers. Their triage and community teams are super technical and responsive, so your reports are handled quickly and fairly. Plus, you get paid as soon as your reports are triaged and accepted. But it's not just about the payouts though. There is a real sense of community here with a lot of educational hacking content for you, such as blogs, videos, and challenges. If you're serious about hacking or looking for a platform to take your skills to the next level, join Integrity today. And if you're a business looking for a trusted bug bounty platform, they've got you covered too. It's been a game changer, so please make sure you check them out. Now, let me share something that my buddy Smeagles told me early on in my career. Stop relying on tools. Start using your brain. I didn't listen at first, of course. I was busy running the same scanners as everybody else, finding low impact bugs. But when I finally took his advice, everything changed. In this video, I'm going to show you the exact framework top bug bounty hunters are using this year. Not just to find random vulnerabilities, but to constantly land high impact bugs that companies actually care about. Let's start with something most people don't understand about bug bounties, and that is the foundations. 10 years of hunting has taught me that successful bug bounty hunters in 2025 aren't just throwing random scanners at targets. They are taking a completely different approach, starting with three core elements. First, the technical stack. Modern web applications aren't simple anymore. You're dealing with sophisticated frameworks, microservices, and complex architecture. When I was starting out, I wasted months scanning for basic cross-site scripting. Now, I focus on understanding how these systems are connected and where they're likely to break. Every new feature, every integration, or any new endpoint creates potential weak points, but only if you know what you're looking for. Don't worry, if this part doesn't make sense, we'll come back to it. But I want to highlight that websites are complicated. You need to start understanding how they work or even gain some experience on building these systems before you start breaking them. Now, let's talk about your workspace. Here is the truth. You don't need any fancy tools. When I landed my $9,000 bounty with Yahoo, I wasn't using any complex scanners. I used basic tools like SQL map that made me more efficient rather than doing the job for me. At its core, you need a tool like Kaido or something similar for proxying traffic, a simple note-taking system, and basic scripting capabilities. That's it. You don't need a fancy laptop, you don't need a MacBook, you don't need a VPS. All you need is a working laptop that can support Kaido and a working Wi-Fi. When I first started hacking, that was my entire setup. I didn't have anything fancy. Nowadays, I get a bunch of messages from you guys asking what operating system should I use? What laptop should I buy? What tools should I invest? You don't need any of that. Trust me. All you need is a simple workstation and you just need to get to work. Finally, let's discuss methodology. This is where most people fail. They jump straight into testing without a plan. But some of the top bug bounty hunters, they think differently. They map out the entire application, document interesting features, and most importantly, they hack with an objective. 
It's not about finding random vulnerabilities anymore. It's about understanding what could hurt the business the most. Before we dive into the target selection though, I want to mention something that could help you fast track your journey. I've personally created a comprehensive bug bounty course with over 10 hours of content and more than a hundred hands-on labs. It is designed to take you from the basics all the way through advanced techniques. So whether you are just starting out or looking to level up your skills, you will find practical and actionable content to help you succeed. So check out the link in the description. I'll make it for 70% off just for the next couple of days. So now that we understand the foundation, we need to talk about picking targets. Now I'm going to tell you something controversial. You need to stop treating bug bounty programs like a buffet. Think about this. Most bug bounty hunters are jumping between the 20 different programs, running the same automated scans as everybody else, hoping to get a lucky break. How's that working? Not great, but I'm going to share a strategy that actually works. Let me tell you something I've learned from hanging out with some of the top bug bounty hunters who are constantly landing four to five digit bounties. They focus on companies that meet two criteria. First, they look for companies with massive attack surfaces. I'm talking about organizations like Amazon, where every new deployment, every future release, or even every new UX or UI design creates new opportunities. The attack surface here isn't just because they have a bunch of different subdomains, it's because Amazon's core application is massive. You have specific functionality for people who shop on Amazon. Then you have specific applications for affiliates, businesses, prime members, and all of that is a part of their core application. But then you also have region specific functionalities that only applies to accounts on those specific countries like Amazon India or Amazon in China. Second, this was a game changer for me personally. They pick companies that they actually use. When you understand their product as a user, you spot things others miss. You notice when something doesn't make sense, you find edge cases that automated tools will miss, or even better, you realize when something has changed in the UI or when the order of things have changed. Let me give you a real example. Last year, I started researching specific patterns in ad platforms. Instead of randomly testing, I focused on understanding how these platforms work. This approach led me to multiple significant findings, including a bug in Facebook's ad platform that got me $100,000. But here's where it gets interesting. Once you pick your target, you need to go deep, really, really deep. I'm talking about understanding their tech stacks, their deployment process, and their business model. When a new feature launches, you need to understand its purpose, how it's connected to the other parts of the application, and of course, you should be the one to test it first. Think about it this way. Would you rather be the hundredth person scanning Amazon.com or the first person to really understand how their brand new social shopping feature works? Let's talk about what actually separates successful hackers from everybody else, their process. Most people open up Kaido, pass requests to repeater, and hunt for basic vulnerabilities. That approach may get you an XSS, but it won't land you those high impact bugs companies care about. When I transitioned from chasing $250 XSS to that $9,000 SQL injection on Yahoo, I learned to hack with an objective. Start by asking yourself, what would hurt this company the most? For banks, it's unauthorized access to funds. For social media platforms, it's account takeovers. For e-commerce, it's price manipulation or data leaks. Let's take a look at Shopify. You could hunt for XSS on their main site or understand that their business revolves around merchant trust. Now you're looking for ways one merchant can access another's data or view unreleased products for a competitor. That is the difference between low impact bug and a critical finding. Of course, this approach takes more time. You won't find your first bug in an hour, but the payoff is worth it. I've seen basic XSS reports pay hundreds while chain vulnerabilities showing business impact can hit five figures. Now let's talk about advanced techniques. Advanced doesn't mean complicated. It means smarter. Think of modern applications like a puzzle. Each piece might look normal, but connecting them is where you find critical bugs. I learned this during my hunt on Yahoo. Instead of looking for individual SQL injections, I started understanding how the different applications are connected. Let's think about an XSS. It may pay you a few hundred dollars, but chain it with an OAuth flow for an account takeover. Now you're looking at a serious, serious impactful bug. One of my favorite techniques is actually thinking about assumption breaks, places where developers make assumptions about the user behavior. Maybe they assume that the users only access their own data or requests come in a specific order. These assumptions hide business logic flaws. Take an e-commerce site, adding items, applying discounts, and then you're checking out. Sounds pretty simple, right? But what if you manipulate the order, apply discounts after reduction, 
this thinking starts to help you find interesting bugs. This same exact method also applies to registration, invite system, and just anything that has multiple steps. The key isn't to just know vulnerabilities, it's understanding how systems should work and then finding ways to break that flow. Now, let's take a moment and talk about momentum something rarely discussed in bug bounty hunting. Finding a bug here and there is great, don't get me wrong, but being consistent is what is going to set you apart as a hacker. You land a great bug, maybe a few thousand dollars, then nothing for weeks. Most people here panic and they start to jump from target to another target. That is a mistake, trust me. When I can't find bugs, I change perspective, not targets. If I've been focusing on client-side vulnerabilities, maybe I'll switch over to looking at some APIs. If I've been looking at the main application, I explore the developer platform. This approach allows me to find patterns across similar platforms, like when I discovered a vulnerability in Facebook and a bunch of other companies. Every code deployment creates new opportunities. You need to start tracking these changes, monitoring JavaScript files and new API endpoints and all their future releases. While other bug bounty hunters are looking at new programs, you are discovering new attack services in your existing targets. But here is something you need to protect yourself from, and that is burnout. When you have stared at an application for weeks, you miss things. That's why I keep a backup target. Some days aren't meant for hacking, and that is okay. It's one of the best parts of this career is the freedom to choose when and how you want to work. And let's wrap this up by talking about the bigger picture, making bug bounty hunting sustainable. Finding bugs is just a part of it. The most successful hackers build relationships. Each report starts with a conversation with the security teams and other hackers. Build your reputation. Companies don't want to just pay for bugs. They want to pay for expertise. They want bug bounty hunters who understand their system and become trusted partners. My journey from basic XSS to a six-figure bug bounty wasn't just about technical skills. It was about understanding business impact and communicating it. This career has given me incredible freedom. I've built my own pen test firm, my educational platform with Hacking Hub, and of course, this beautiful community with my YouTube channel. But more importantly, I can work from anywhere, whether it's a coffee shop, an airport, or a different country. The path I've outlined isn't easy. It requires patience and dedication, but it works. I've seen it transform lives, including my own, from a broke college kid sharing a one-bedroom apartment to having the freedom to work on my own terms. Remember what we covered, strong foundation, strategic target selection, methodology, and consistent effort. But most importantly, take action. All the knowledge means nothing without practice. Start your journey today, whether it's to find your first $250 bounty or your path to a six-figure payday. The opportunity is there. I'll be watching from afar, ready to help guide you through it all.